Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR 3U1 video. And in this video, we are starting chapter 6 on sinusoidal functions. And our first lesson is on section 6.1 on periodic functions and their properties. Here's the chapter outline for chapter 6. We are starting off again with section 6.1 and you can find extra practice questions on this topic on pages 352 to 356. Here is the success criteria for, for our first uh, chapter 6 lesson. We want to explore graphs that repeat at regular intervals. We want to learn the difference between a periodic and a non-periodic function. And we want to look at the key features or properties of periodic functions and how to find them. Let's first look at periodic versus non-periodic functions. So what is a periodic function? Well, it is a function whose graph repeats at regular intervals, resulting in y values in a table of values showing a repetitive pattern when the x values increase at a constant rate or by the same increment, meaning that if x increases by 1, y shows a repetitive pattern in its numbers. Periodic functions have, again, regular repeating patterns and describe scenarios that happen in a cycle or a period. Now, what's a period? A period is the change in the independent variable, right? Usually x on an x and y graph, corresponding to one cycle. So the period is the distance of our x axis of one cycle. On a graph, it is the portion of the graph that repeats. So if we take a look at these graphs down below, it is actually shown here in this first graph what a period looks like. So we have here a sinusoidal function that repeats over and over again. It just keeps going and repeating and repeating. And the portion of the graph that repeats is this portion. You can see that it starts at the origin. It goes up, then down, then up, and then it starts here again. It goes up, then down, then up, right? So that's the part that repeats. And the period is the x distance um, that it covers. So from the origin to about, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So the period would be 6 because one cycle goes through um, a distance of 6 on the x-axis. And on this graph over here, our period could be, if we don't want to start at the origin, we could start up here and say that the period, this is the part of the graph that repeats. So the period is from 4 to 12, right, which has in between 8, um, eight uh, distances, 8 units, sorry. So our period for this, for this uh, graph would be 6. And in comparison to periodic functions, a non-periodic function does not have regular repeating patterns, as we can see by these graphs down below. This is a parabola, which does not repeat. And this is uh, another graph, which also does not have a repeating pattern. Here are some properties and key features of periodic functions that we should be familiar with. First off, we have a tro and a peak. A tro is the minimum point on the graph, um, meaning the smallest y value that the graph touches. So if we take a look here on the graph, it is um, actually uh, shown to you that the peak touches the highest point, the, hi uh, the highest y value, right, which is 1, uh, uh, looks like in this graph, um, that the peak of our graph touches uh, y equals 1, that line of y equals 1, which is um, shown as a dashed line on that graph. Uh, sorry, that is a peak, my bad. I messed up there. Uh, tro is down here. We're looking at tro first, which is the minimum value of the graph which touches this y equals negative 1 line, uh, which is the lowest point that the graph goes. And a peak is the maximum point on the graph. So a peak up here touches this y equals 1 line, which is the highest the graph touches. So it's kind of the exact opposite of the tro. Tro is the minimum, and peak is the maximum. Next, we have the equation sorry, we have the equation of the axis, which is the equation 
of the horizontal line that cuts straight through the middle of the periodic function um, right in between the maximum and minimum values. The equation to calculate for the equation of the axis is y equals the max value plus the minimum value divided by 2. So you can get that uh, y value right in the middle of the max and min points. Lastly here, we have the amplitude of the function, uh, which is the which is half the difference between the maximum and minimum values. And this is actually the distance between the axis and the maximum or minimum values of the function. So if we have a function, we'll actually just take a look at this example that we have on the right. Uh, we have the height of the end of the metal strip um, and we have the height and the time. Uh, as time goes on, the, uh, the height of the metal strip kind of goes up and down, up and down. And we want to calculate for, let's say, the equation of the axis and the amplitude. The equation of the axis is the line right down the middle of the function. So we can actually just count in this case. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares, right? So we, if we count one, two, three, four squares, our equation of the axis is right by this line, which is y equals five. But if we were to calculate for it, we would take the maximum value, which is nine in this case, the minimum value, which it looks like is one, and we divide it by two. We would add it, sorry, not, uh, not minus. We have an addition sign here. So we get 10 divided by two, which is five. And this is our equation of the axis, which we have up here. And our amplitude is the distance between our axis and our a troll or a peak. So the distance from here to here would be four or the distance from here to here would also be four. Sorry, from here to here. Okay, so our amplitude would be A equals four. Or you could just say that that is half the distance between the max and the minimum points. Here's a quick example before we end the video. It says, determine if the following graphs are periodic. If so, state the period, amplitude, and equation of axis um, of the following periodic graphs. So let's look at the first graph here. It looks like there's a periodic graph because there's a pattern that clearly repeats throughout the graph, right? So first we wanna calculate the period, which will simply be the part of the graph that repeats. And if we start at the beginning at this 12 and we draw the section of the graph that repeats, we can see that it spans over uh, an x value or x values of 365. So our period will be 365 days, right? Our equation of axis will be y equals the max point, which is 18, plus the minimum point, which is 6, all over 2. 18 plus 6 is going to be 24, divided by 2 will be 12. So our equation of axis is y equals 12. And our amplitude will be half the distance between the max and the min points. So the max and the min points are 18 plus 6, which is going to give us 24. So half this distance will be 12. So, oh, not 12, sorry. The distance between the max and the min points is the max minus the minimum, which will give you 12. Now, if you half this, you would get 6. So our amplitude would be 6. And as we can see from here, from our equation of axis to a peak, we have six units. And from our equation of axis to our tro, we also have six units. That's our amplitude. Okay. Now let's look at the next example. It looks like we also have a periodic function in this case, because we can see that there's a clear pattern that repeats this pattern right here. It's kind of weird, but that repeats over and over again. Our period spans where uh, um, the repeating, uh, where we have one cycle of the repeating pattern, um, and it spans from zero to six on the x-axis. So our period will be six seconds because our x-axis is in time. Uh, next, we have the equation of axis, which will be max minus uh, max, which is one plus min, which is negative six, it looks like. So one plus negative six all over two. 
So it's going to be negative 5 over 2. Okay? That's our equation of axis. Sorry. That's going to be y equals that. Uh, and then our amplitude is halfway between the max and the midpoints, or half the distance. So the max is 1. The, uh, the minimum is 6. So if we subtract them, we get 7. And so half this distance will be 3.5. Okay, so that's the amplitude from our midpoint, which is negative 5 over 2, which is negative 2.5 right here. So this distance will be 2.5, sorry, 3.5. And this distance will be 3.5. Sorry, not to there. 3.5. Okay, last example here, meter stick motion. Um, again, we have to look at it if the graphs are periodic or non-periodic, and this graph looks like it's non-periodic. So we don't have to find the period, the equation of the axis, nothing, because it has no repeating patterns. Okay, and that is it for the video, guys. I hope you were able to understand everything well, and I'll see you in the next one.